Alright, hey everybody. I hope everyone's had a great weekend. Sorry for my longer break. My um, Friday night, um, pe some people from my internet company came out to fix my internet after the lightning strike last week broke it up. I mean, messed it all up, and they were actually here almost the entire evening, so that's why I wasn't able to stream. But I'm back now with better internet. I almost doubled my bitrate, so I hope the stream looks a lot better now. It seems like my internet can handle it just perfect, so. Okay, so let's get started. We were working on um, updating the Lua scripts, so we wanted to fix this problem. Here when we're trying to do the A star move movement, we have to see if the ability is even usable. We need to do a pathfinding request. But the problem is we have to also do it again right here, and there were two options, either the actual game could try to cache this request and then just give it back to the script immediately, but that could lead to some problems, um, mostly because the game doesn't know exactly what the script wants it for, so I thought it'd be better if um, the script itself could just store these results as needed, and to make that a little easier, I want this arguments function to have a memory table that the actual game will um, keep track of with this ability and monster combination and so it'll pass that table from the usable function automatically to the get targets function and these arguments. We've already done something similar when we um, get selections to actions because you can store some data in the memory for the specific option and that's passed along so it's kind of something similar. Hey yellow cool Pokemon, sure. What do you um, have to ask? Okay so yeah we were kind of in the middle but one thing I wanted to do is um, I guess I was too lazy to create this Lua memory cache into an actual I component so I didn't have to use this variable. And I think I'll go ahead and do that now, just because it'll make things easier in the long run. And again, this interface just allows me to use it with my um, Git component framework. Okay, I'm using Unity, and I don't know that Unity uses Lua, so how does it work? Are there multiple languages? Oh, okay, so yeah, Unity doesn't use Lua. Um, just straight out of the box. I have a plugin called um, Moonsharp, and it's really easy to set up. You can just search for it in Google, and you can download um, a Unity package that will install it right into your game for you, and it's really easy to use. I actually have a tutorial about it if you want um, to check out my YouTube channel if you're curious. problem. But yeah, I really love uh, Lua. It's actually one of my first languages I really knew very well, so it kind of has a special place in my heart. As much as a programming language could, I guess. Okay, so I guess this is one problem. I think, um, oops, sorry about that. So this ready to, for cleanup should return true when we want the game to basically delete this object. And so, and basically we want that to happen whenever we exit the play scene. And I think the easiest way to do that would be actually just to have a um, a disposed value here, and then just have something down the line. Call um, I disposable on this object, or call dispose on this object, I should say. Oh, it's already here. Although, isn't that kind of roundabout? I guess it doesn't make much difference. And so then we just return disposed. So I should write a note to remind me to dispose this whenever we do asset cleanup. Okay, 
expose assets, Lua, caches. Okay, and we also had the... There's the other cache, which was the ability usable cache. I'm trying to remember where that is. So we'll go ahead and implement the I component here as well. With the same way. Exposed. And I know we probably should check like, um, here when we try to add something that the cache isn't disposed, but it's not a huge deal. Okay, so yeah, that was all we have to do. Oh, this is wrong. This should be setting it to true. Um. Alright, oh, and then I just need to change all references to this, which was used a couple of times. So instead of having a variable claim to the cache, oh, this actually uses both variables, so we can uh, two with one stone right here. And so yeah, we don't have to claim this variable anymore, we can just say get component, and it will take care of the rest. The main advantage here is that we don't need to worry about whether this object has been created already so we can get rid of this code. And we also don't have to keep saying dot value which kind of cleans up code a little bit. Should we clear this? Yeah I guess so because it doesn't it's not needed after the choice phase. So yeah the select window also just needs to get the actual cache doesn't need to be a variable anymore. And okay, so that's I guess those are the only two objects that use that. Oh what is this? Oh alright, because I don't want to confuse it with a unity get component, I think yeah it's get beluga component. Beluga is my little code package. And then, so here, let's see what else I've updated to use this selection regenerator. It's just started. I think that's what I'm working on right now because it has the errors still. Target manager. Yeah, so we can get rid of, again, that variable. Okay. That looks good. Ability computer, we already did that. Hmm. This isn't. Would it? Oh, yeah, because it uses the memory from the. Um, yeah, this memory from the, um, the get usable function. Okay, so I was trying to figure out why this script actually needed the. The Lua table cache, but that's why, because it stores it right here. Okay, so now we're all caught up, and I can check this off. So we need yeah, this regenerator, which we're working on now, to also regenerate usable memory. And this will probably be the class that needs the most updating. Mostly because we have to change a little bit the way the state works. So right now, yeah, we didn't have this usable cache, but the problem is that the get targets requires the table from the usable function, so we have to make sure we calculate this first. And the whole point of the cache is so that we don't have to call these functions twice in one turn, but you could still get here without a certain function being calculated or sorry, a certain script being called if, for example, you disconnected and the server just caught you up with the rest of the players and it just returned to you the, your actual actions. 
And then also, of course, we have to yeah, generate this information for the other players because we wouldn't have that. So yeah, there are several instances. So first of all, we'll just get all the usable. Yeah, we'll just make this simple and get all the usable t uh, tables first, and then once we have all that, we'll get all the targets. You could maybe be a little faster, just slightly, if you didn't wait, but... Um, Alright, so let's see. I'm trying to figure out where I started last time. Okay, so it looks like I haven't actually updated any of this yet, because it goes straight to get targets when it should go to usable. We can leave this for now. I'm not sure exactly where I'll put this code, so I'll just comment it out and come back to it. Okay, but I'll actually copy it because I think the actual code we'll use will be similar. So really, we just need to instead of calling get targets, we need to call get usable, uh, which has a similar structure. It get usable or just ability usable? I forget what I called it. There we go. And then uh, we should also subscribe to the results message. Oh, I didn't copy the whole thing. So this will be a uh, usable Lua complete, and we'll go ahead and just generate this function so it will leave us alone about the error, and I'll, but I'll actually come and fill it out a little bit later. Okay, so yeah, here uh, when we in initialize yeah, we'll start cycling through everything. Just because we want to call... well... I need to see if we actually have... or if we actually need this function to be called. Oh wait, I copied the wrong thing right there. Remember, right, that's the only... yeah, we just need the ability on the monster. Okay, so I need to create some function here that I can call to see if we actually need to call that function. Okay, so, um... Is missing... Uh, let's call it usable memory. So that ability, and monster. Do I have? Yeah, I have the cache already. So hopefully I have a function in the cache already that will tell me if we if the memory exists. Okay, so I just have try get. I guess we could use it. Just to keep things simple and have the least number of functions. Sorry, my voice is breaking up. Let me get a drink of water. Alright, that feels a little better. Yeah, so we'll use the Moon Sharp, which this is just basically the C Sharp class um, corresponding to a Lua table. And then we'll pass here the monster and ability. It's a little confusing, I should swap these, I guess. Should have the same order. And then out table, but we won't actually use that value yet. We're gonna need something similar to see if we're missing uh, the get targets memory. Well, let's just call it missing target memory. Because here we'll also want to return the actual target index. Right, it has yeah, the option. 
I want to try and keep these names the same. Alright, and so right here we won't call this out. Okay, I'm trying to decide how optimized I want to be. Okay, so first let's just go um, unoptimized but less likely for bugs. I think that's probably smartest for now. So, yeah, we'll only send if is missing usable memory. I guess we should pull this out before so I can use those values. Then we have selection, monster, and selection ability. Alright, uh, missing a curly bracket here, aren't I? Oh right, the opening one. Okay, there we go. And then, so here, I'll just, I mean, technically we could try to, um, like, only do this once we receive a result from this, but, um, like I said, I'm going to try to minimize bugs right now, and we can optimize this class later. Oops. Picked the wrong one. So while we're in the working usable state, which is when these functions should be running, we'll want to again sort through everything and see if we're missing any usable memory. So let's see. We'll have all. Um, no, it'll be true at the start. And so if we're missing, then have all would be false. So if we have all memory, then we can call this, which will start the next state. Um, but of course, I need to change this state variable so we won't continually loop through here. Targets. Okay, so I already have this any script running. Um, so I guess I could clean this up a little bit, but I should change this to any get targets script running. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this out, I guess. To any usable. Oops. Script running. Um, and I can clean this up to so just return true if we get that far. And then if we're ever missing anything, we'll just return false. And we don't need this have all variable anymore. Oh right, and then I need to. I actually need to invert this, don't I? Because this is if there's any script running, so we should return true here and false here. Don't need this comment anymore. Right, so now I need to update this to just use this uh, similar function. Which is missing usable memory. And, oh wait, not usable, not memory, it is missing target memory, and then I also need to pass the option, which I called target index here. How confusing. Oh, hey, Ice Boy, haven't seen you in a while. I'm doing great. How are you tonight? really excited because I've finally been able to upgrade my streaming setup so I hope the stream does look better now. Okay so this is when we first enter the phase 
Oh, good to hear you're doing good. So this, oh yeah, we don't need this anymore. So it's gonna clear the cache, but we don't do that here, actually. Um, and then yeah, it's gonna cancel any Lua. So yeah, we should do this if working get targets or state is working usable. We'll cancel Lua, but we won't clear the cache, I don't think. Okay, I'm glad you could tell a difference. So let's see, what's this doing? So it's basically... Okay, I guess it's checking to see if this is a result we actually care about. Yeah, I see. We'll do something similar here. So selections count. Let me get the selection if the monster ID. So how come I don't check the ability ID, I wonder? I guess I just didn't think it was needed. So dot ability index equals result. Okay, so I don't care about the target index at this point. And then I would just store this information into the cache. Um, set from usable. And then uh, result Lua memory. So it takes care of that. And there's no way an exception can be called at this point. So we can get rid of this whole try catch. Here, I guess I just did this to be careful, although I don't really know how this could happen because we actually ask for a. Sp oh, well, no, we don't. Um, I was gonna say we ask for a specific index, but we don't because this get targets doesn't. Um, it just gets the whole list. Speaking about that, we need to pass the memory here. So, cache. Oh, I need to. Um, I have to use a try get. So, table memory. Um, I'm trying to see. So, I guess. Okay, we'll just do. Yeah, if. I don't really know how this could happen, but. how it could happen that the try get would return false right here. And then out memory. Okay, and maybe I should just throw an error or at least um, output something. Engine debug log error. Missing value after being calculated. So I'm not really sure how that could happen besides the cache gets cleared or I actually accidentally don't store it correctly, which I guess either of those could happen. It's probably a good idea to have that error there just in case. index equals result okay and then yeah it's saying yeah for some reason the options that the script returns are less than what the server told us was actually chosen and there's some problem Okay, 
that's interesting. So we actually store the option class itself. What is this? Well, it pretty much just contains the memory, so we don't really need to store this. Right, because we don't pass the indicators, do we? That seems kind of useless. Let me see. So the ability... Yeah, here it is. Selection target arguments. So we actually, yeah, we do pass this player turn selection. Yeah, but it just contains the player monster ability and the memory. It doesn't contain the indicators. So I think, yeah, we don't need to keep this whole thing. We just want the memory from it. And we'll store that in the cache. Okay, actually it contains the whole list. So we'll need to construct that list. Um, let's make a separate function and do that because this function is getting pretty indented. Um, so let's say create memory list from the, this list here. Ability target option. Okay, so table memory list. Let's create a new one here. I don't think there's any reason to try to recycle them for the time being. So for each option and options, memory list add option dot blue memory and we just return it. Okay, so here we'd return the or we'd pass the monster index and the ability index and then the list. So that sets the cache, and now when we go update here, we want to see if any usable script running, and then it will check for the specific index. This should really be renamed, shouldn't it? It should be um, change it to missing any target memory. Change this to is missing any usable memory. Instead of, because it doesn't actually tell you if a script is running, it tells you if you're missing any memory. Um, okay, so now it knows if we have all the memory, then it can move on to the next part of the game. One other problem that could happen here is, well, just I was thinking that this target index wouldn't be included in the memory list, but I guess if that was the case, this error would have been thrown, which would have caused the whole game to stop, so I don't think that we can't get stuck in a soft lock here. Okay, so I think we're done with the regenerator. I just want to see if there's any errors since we cleaned up that class. We just don't need to call value anymore. Let's just let it compile. I guess we could play the game now, but I don't think it would get very far because it would change too much that we can't actually do anything until we finish updating this whole code, or all this code. So what did I just do? Generate usable memory, okay. And not call scripts if we already have it. I did that. And I did the use the new cache. Okay, so old options dictionary cache and sort players. So let's look at that.
Oh yeah, it uses this. Why does it even need this? So call Lua. Okay, so it actually gets the target option. But again, I don't think it really needs it. Oh, what am I looking for? I want to see how the Lua caller actually uses this information. Yeah, all it does is just use the, the memory out of it. Oh, well, no, it's... Okay, it actually does use all the stuff out of the selection. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting confused. So, yeah, we have this list of selections. That's where it gets most of this data from. And then it just gets the corresponding Lua memory out of this other cache. So we can clean that up. Um, trying to figure out how I want to actually pass it here. I guess the easiest way would just be to pass a corresponding list. Although, in the back of my head, I'm thinking... I don't like that because I have to generate just some more another list that will just create garbage, but that's okay. So yeah, this I'll change this to be a list of yeah, table. And this will just be the Lua memory. So I guess I need to change this to be yeah, just a normal for loop. I less than parameters, selections, selections count. And then I need to actually get this object. Okay, so what is it? It's a turn selection. Selections I, and then the Lua memory will be in the same index like that. And I won't even check to see if the arrays don't match because that would be a problem on my end and not. There's no way the any Lua scripts or the server can um, influence that or cause any errors there. Okay, so now I need to update the sorter. Okay, yeah, so it uses this old dictionary which we're getting rid of. I'll actually just go and delete this. So that way I won't, I won't be sticking around where it's not needed. So let's change it. Um, ability. Oh, wait. Blue memory cache, there we go. And I can simplify this code quite a bit. Oh, it's still pretty simple, but now it looks a lot cleaner. Okay, and so now we need to create that list here. Uh, let's just have an outside function do it for me. So list table, and I need to use move sharp. I guess I could also just pass the memory cache to the sort players, but that seems like... Yeah, I think that doesn't decouple sort players enough from the rest of the game, so I'll, do, I'll just keep it how it is. smart here because it already has to use the game data and stuff so it's not technically decoupled. Let's just see how hard this would be. Um, so if I had ability Lua memory cache I guess nowhere else am I going to actually pass the memory cache so it's kind of inconsistent have this code do it. 
but again, it's not really difficult. Okay, I'll just, um, yeah, maybe I'll update the other scripts to use the same format. Instead of having this list now, all it needs to do is just pass the selection and we'll get the actual memory um, from the cache. Okay, and so I'll need to also do the try get. actually yeah we're gonna have to pass actually a list of lists here I think or no oh yeah I'm just making myself confused okay so yeah we just pass the monster and the ability and the option I guess if this is false, we'll just throw an error. Uh, but this shouldn't happen. So Unity, engine, debug, log, messing, get targets, memory. And now I can just pass that along. So that makes things quite a bit easier here, because I don't have to have that separate function. So am I done? Is that all I had to update here? That was it. That was pretty simple. Okay, so it targets Lua caller. Instead of passing the Lua memory, maybe I can do the same thing here. I'm trying to think if there's any re reason I'd want to pass a different memory here before I just delete. The capability to do that. I doubt it. Okay, so we'll have private um, ability cache. get the value here. So F memory cache. Um, target from usable. So parameter monster and ability out memory. And again if this is false, let's just throw something here. Ability usable memory. Okay, so now I need to update the regenerator again just to remove that line. And yeah, now we can remove this if else as well. Okay, I think that's probably better. So we did, yeah, we finished the sorting. Okay, update selections to actions to use the memory cache. So first let's do the little caller. Okay, so it has a target, but we don't need to pass that because we only need the selection again. 
Because we only needed the target for the memory, and now we can get that from the cache. This. It's just like a nested um, initializer. Basically, it's going to be the same uh, format as here, so I think I'll just copy that code. This is basically the end of this um, memories path that goes from usable to get targets to to selections. I think yeah, we don't have to store anymore. But uh, before I do that, I should probably take a look at the C# -sharp script that actually manages calling that. Action creator, what's this do? Okay, this is what calls the scripts, I think. Yeah, because that was cancelled. So I just need. This class doesn't even need the cache, actually. Because all it was using it for was to pass it, and now the actual Lua caller does that. It's not needed anymore either. Okay, let's look. I think yeah, select target manager has another thing. Okay, so this is when we actually. This is back where we're selecting the target. Okay, so I actually did update this class a little bit already. But yeah, now we don't need to have this memory here. Oh, I do because we'll have to set the value at the end. Yeah, we just don't have to pass anything because the Lua color will take care of that for us. Alright, we're all good. Any other errors here? Got one warning though. Private field memory cache is assigned but never used. Okay, yeah, the sorter doesn't need this anymore because, like I said, we moved that to the actual Lua caller class. something else off. So we move the old cache value from component tags. Okay, I did that already. So now we need to clear the cache at the end of the ordering phase. And also the pathfinders at the end of the ordering phase. Not sure if that is true. Oh well yeah because no more scripts will be called after ordering phase. Okay so let's see what when would what would be the best to take care of that? I guess the error checker could do it. Or maybe I'll just have the actual ordering phase manager take care of that. Let's 
Or it could be, um, create the, could be this because after this, when this is done, then all of the, uh, everything would be finished. But no, yeah, I shouldn't do that because there's some ways they could be skipped over. Maybe I should actually wait and just clear everything out at the beginning of a turn. Because that can never be skipped. And that way we know that at the beginning of the turn there won't be any values stuck in there that shouldn't be. So let's see, where should that happen? Initialize. Where's the initializer? Okay, so this is the init turn phase manager. All it does now, I think, is this call the new turn script. And so we definitely need to clear out everything before that runs. Yeah, run scripts. So maybe. Maybe just right here, right before we call. Um, uh, right before we enter the phase. But when does that happen? Okay, yeah, right here. If we go into the init turn, then we switch to run scripts. So maybe right here. I should just have. It feels it doesn't feel right for this manager to just call everything itself. I wonder if there should be some other script that will do that. Um, okay, let's just make like an ability cache clear class. It seems a little weird to do that, but there's nothing, no other class that really would make sense. I guess this class could also dispose the caches when everything is done. Okay, so we'll want the ability Lua memory cache, and also the ability usable cache. Take a uh, auto controller. And really, what we need to do is just subscribe to this on turn ch phase change. And when we enter the initialized turn, then we would want to clear everything out. And I don't, there's no way this can be skipped. Is it? Yeah, the turn. What is it that actually controls the turn phase? I think it's... Wait, what is it? Um... I thought there was like a turn manager down here, but looks like not. Oh, it's just, I call it the flow manager, okay. And I think this is the only thing that has yeah, the claim on the turn phase. So I just want to make sure that there's no way the initialized turn can be skipped. So enter. Oh, okay, that's the intro. figure out how I did this. So on enter, initialize turn phase. Oh, I see. So when the initialize turn phase is inactive and the turn phase is in the init turn, that means that it's done. So we move on to choice. So this, yeah, we do the same thing for the match intro phase and here, finalize turn.
trying to see where it goes back into the init turn. Did I forget to loop it around? Well, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I did mess this up. It goes straight to the choice when it should actually go to init turn, so I'm glad I fixed that. Yeah, because if we went straight to choice, then it would skip calling the new turn script as well as clearing all these caches, so. Okay, so now that I know that's okay. So we'll want to subscribe yeah, to the turn phase, and then once we enter the init turn, then we would clear everything. So I'll just go ahead and copy this. And I'll have private. Variable sub. Okay. So we don't do that here, but yeah, if it's the initialized turn phase, then we would just call memory cache clear. And usable cache clear. So that way we're ready to start the new turn and no values will be left behind. Alright, I think. Are we ready to test? Oh, I need to clear pathfinders too. So the Pathfinder Manager can, I think, take care of that itself. So I'll just go ahead and copy some of this code. Just when we enter a turn phase, we'll just clear this Pathfinders um, dictionary, which will just clean up everything. And because obviously at the beginning of the next turn, any Pathfinder request that hasn't been used yet basically would be invalid anyway, so we don't need to keep them around in memory. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so let's try out the game. Oh, one other thing I need to add is I need to um, instantiate this object and the subcontroller. We have quite a bit of classes in here. to go. Oh, well, um, I guess we could check it, but I actually haven't updated the actual Lua scripts to use the new system. So all I have to do here is we'll store the results. I guess we can do it like that, but args, memory, uh, paths, And I don't need to store that here, I can just call args paths. That's it. Oh wait, it should be args memory paths. Um, and then yeah, move towards. We don't actually do the pathfinding until here, so nothing to store. And then move to different works similarly. So args memory paths equals results, and then equals args memory paths. Okay, that's fine. So actually, this is interesting. Do we need to clear the path? I mean, the um, caches before the after turn effects run? I don't 
think so. Because the after turn effects don't have an ability. Oh yeah, they use a totally different pipeline because they obviously aren't tied to an ability so none of these scripts are actually called on them. And it doesn't have any memory because basically they all take place in this one function. Okay. All right, so f oh, no, there was an error. I was about to say so far so good. Object reference. And then cache clear. Oh, I didn't actually get these objects yet. That was silly. Something simple though. Let's try this one more time. Come on. I always forget to exit it off before I recompile, because Unity always doesn't really like it if you leave the game playing. For, I don't know why it doesn't exit itself. Okay. So, let's use both. That would have used memory. Two different ones. Okay, so something's not working. There's a different usable complete. It looks like it's trying to... Yeah, see, I shouldn't have done this because we should have stored the usable, so it seems like the game is having trouble storing the memory or it's not getting it back in the right position because a star move yeah because it shouldn't have had to call the usable script again because it was called up here yeah ability move usable okay so let's see what could be going on there okay, so first of all did I mess up on the hash code maybe it all looks good. Dictionary key cache. Let's try set from usable. That should work okay. Oh, uh, no. I was going to say, I don't actually store the memory, but I do. And this is a class, so it's not like it's throwing away the, the memory there. Okay, so right, if it doesn't find a value which it would return false. I wonder, is it getting cleared? When it shouldn't. That could be. So debug log. Oh. Unity engine debug. And just so I can see it easily, I'll make it an error. Um, cleared. So let's, I guess let's test that, and if I see that it's being cleared at a time when it shouldn't be, then that should be easy to figure out. Otherwise, something's going wrong with it actually storing values, which could be a bit more of a problem. Okay, so this clear is okay, because that happened at the very beginning of the game. Uh, but actually, did it happen before the ability moves are usable, so ability usables were called? Find a new turn. Okay, and then the usable afterwards, so no, that wasn't the issue. And I wondered, maybe I don't actually store them. No, it 
does right here. Call. When does it? No, it's done. Okay, so the call count idle. Okay, so it doesn't really take care of moving on. Okay, so I don't see any, any way this could cause any problems. See if we see any uh, inappropriate clears. Okay, so yeah, it's still fortunately something's going wrong because it's still calling them again, but there's only one clear message. So that's not the issue. Cash, but I guess I moved it already. Oh no, I was on it the time. Okay, so I want to get rid of this. Um, and let's have some more um, logs here. So, um, let's have a good two string. No, let's make one. Just to help me out here. Format. And we'll do monster and ability. Okay, so this would be set memory for. Here I should check. Yeah, I should check to see if it's actually storing this. So let's just call cache. So if this returns false, then we know something is going wrong in the actual dictionary with the hash code. Okay, so let's, yeah, we should be able to see just from looking at the errors. So set memory, true. Okay, so it said true for all of them. Maybe there's a problem here with the try get usable. So if try get value is true, then it checks to see if the table is not null. Maybe I'm using this function wrong. Yeah, no, that's right. If try get value is false. Throws an error. Oh, this is wrong though. This should be equals false because this should return true if it's not in the table. Okay, that's probably the whole issue. So it was actually storing everything correctly, but it was still because of that logic error, it was just waiting forever. So now I'm no 
Unless there's some other errors, I'm pretty sure this will work. Okay, so got a little farther, but there's some other problem. Let's look and see where it got to. So a little runtime exception. Okay, so something in the script, that's no big deal. Uh, 146, attempt to next a nil value. And memory path. Okay, so yeah, it's not, the memory's not getting passed to it, which is a little bit weird. So we got through the sorting, and now it's just calling. This is calling the first function, which yeah, the silver enemy goes first, and we called move to different on that. And the path was null, even though this we set it right here. So yeah, it's not getting the memory passed to it correctly, which is weird because if there was an issue. I should have gotten an error that the table was null. I guess arguments could be null or the selection. Okay, so let's see exactly what was null here. Selection. Selection memory. Okay, so let's run this one more time. Okay, got a little stuttering there. Some of the pathfinding took a bit of time. Still got the same error. Okay, so Lua selection. Okay, so the table wasn't null. The actual path was null. I'm sorry. Hmm, what would cause that? Because these options are still being created. Okay, let's try this. Um, print option memory path. So let's see. The make. Let's make sure this is being called. Or that code is being executed. And that way we can make sure that it's some problem on the C sharp side not storing it correctly and not an issue in Lua. Okay, there's still an error. of paths. Okay, so we know the paths are actually being stored in the Lua memory, but I guess it's not being passed correctly, so let's go look at that. this year. Let's see if the table is null at this point. Oh, we wait, we know the table is not null. That's not the problem. It's that the path isn't sticking around in it. Oh, I'm trying to get the wrong value here. This, this should be try get from targets. And then I also, okay. 
Yeah, I was passing it the ability usable memory and not the uh, get targets memory. Okay, so yeah, that should be that should fix everything. Something happened now that he got being stuck on initialized turn. Is that a problem with this server? Because the game is ready, but the server is not. Maybe it has to do with that initialize phase. I didn't finish everything on the server side. Yeah, the, ser yeah, the server went to choice actions calculation. Okay, so let's, I don't think that'll be that difficult to fix. Um, first, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all these prints because it's not needed anymore. As well as the debugs. I can just go here. Okay. So, server side. Remember, I wasn't completely happy with how it cycles around to the next turn, but we haven't really handled that super well, so I haven't worried about it too much. That might be why it's a little messy. So there is initialized turn on the server face, right? Yeah, right here. So I just need to set that instead of actions calculation right here. Yeah, so if the game's not won yet, it cycles back to the actions calculation, but it should actually go to initialize turn. And I think that's really all I have to do to fix it. Calculated usable again. Yeah, I guess I made it all the way through. Okay, and now that's, we know that since it is calculating these scripts again, that the cache did get cleared correctly, so everything looks good. Okay, so yeah, we're done with that. So yeah, before we do this, I might try to implement like an actual good move script because there's a couple of things we could do. Um, or uh, I guess I should say a fully featured move action because right now the script. Let me see if I can try and illustrate it because right now the move, like the monsters don't care if there's another monster in the way when it tries to move. So for example, if I just moved, I can't get that right now, but I move right there. And then, oh, I want to try to get a path through each other. If I just move there, I can do it next turn. Okay. So, yeah. 
I start to move here, and then if I move right there, we can see that gold, if you looked really closely, gold actually moved like that. And what would we actually want to happen? Well, it's during the pathfinding, the gold would try to avoid it, but if a monster blocked its our movement during its turn, then the script should actually like stop the movement, and something would happen. And also, obviously, they're not really animated, they just kind of move one spot to another, so we really need to work on animation as well. So, I'm not... But in order to do animation, we actually have to get some art, which I've been wanting to do for a while. So we might work on that next, um, do some modeling and then a better move action before we try to add other types of actions. And then I also have like another smaller project I've been wanting to work on, which is more like a platformer, but the interesting thing, thing about that is that um, I'm planning to do like some shader coding, which I don't think I've worked on it on stream yet, so um, that should be kind of fun. So I think I might, I don't know, just swap between those projects as I feel like it, because I've been working on this uh, Pokemon thing for quite a, a couple months now, and I'm sure everybody's getting a bit tired of it. We are making good progress though, so that's always nice. But, oh yep, it is uh, 9 o'clock, so I guess I better um, wrap up. We're at a good stopping point anyway, so thanks everybody for coming by and watching. I do appreciate it. I'm really glad that my computer held up, so I think my new internet is doing just fine. Um, I should be back tomorrow around 8.30 Eastern, and we'll either continue with this or start the new project I haven't decided yet. Maybe brush up on modeling, we'll see. Um, if you have any uh, um, suggestions or requests, I'd be happy to hear them. But if you um, missed some of this stream and you want to catch up or any previous streams, I do upload everything to my YouTube channel. You can see that um, from a link in my description or by typing exclamation point YouTube in chat. I also have a Discord um, server if you want to chat with me and other viewers. It's kind of small community right now, so I'd love more people to join. So feel free to type exclamation point Discord in chat or check my uh, channel description for an invitation. Um, yeah, and I guess that's about it. So thanks everybody again for coming by, and I hope you have a great night. Alright, bye-bye.